Well, she is known as the startup junkie because she's continuously finding new businesses to grow. From selling strawberry shortcakes at local events to franchising her big hit, Crave Parties, all over the U.S., this entrepreneurial machine has the golden touch. Please welcome to our special online show, Melody Berenger. Come on out, Melody. Nice to see you. How are you today? Here. Yeah, it's great, great to have you here. So you're a startup junkie. Well, how do you describe what a startup junkie is? Um, wow. It's somebody that gets bored really fast. <laughs> Has to keep going, start new things. Mm -hmm. so. Aren't you, is it one of those things though, once you've taken a lot of risk and thrown caution to the wind, that it's easier to do it over and over again? It gets easier also, it gets more scary because once you lose a little bit, you don't want to take the next risk, but you, can, you get back up and do it again. All right, and what is this thing you call ladies? The ladies who launch. launch. Yeah, ladies That's who launch. That's an organization out of New York that I licensed for, and I'm a Seattle um, leader. And what we do is we take 10 women a month through an incubator program. So we, I sit down with 10 women, and if we all put our projects into an incubator. It's like a focus group. Mm -hmm. And we spend four weeks helping each other, um, dreaming the big dream and making the small steps to to move on. And why did you want to do that? Why was that important I to you? I love it. I sit in my um, basement every day and, um, and work by myself. So I get out and meet, my, I thrive on connections. So I get to get out of my basement and meet 10 women every month and live vicariously through them because I can't, my husband said, you cannot start all the business. I, my, the first incubator um, that I did, we call them the incubators, these four week incubators. And um, the first one that I did, I came home and I went, I went to go into business with everybody mm -hmm. in the group because <laughs> I'm right. a startup junkie. It's like I see the opportunities everywhere. And um, he's like, no. So I've, I'm living vicariously through all of them. So I, see, I go home and keep my businesses going and um, co coach them. All right. Tell me how this all started. You grew up on a farm. I grew up on a strawberry farm. On a strawberry. Berenger farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well-known place here in the Seattle mm -hmm. area where people like to take their kids at Halloween and for the various you know, holidays yeah, yeah, is a great yeah. place to go. Um, so you started with strawberry shortcakes of all things? I did. Yeah, Actually, I, I started with that. lemonade when I was oh, um, eight first. years old. Uh -huh. I was picking strawberries, and then I decided the next day that was the worst job in the world, so I'm selling <laughs> lemonade. I, I saw the opportunity to sell lemonade to the pickers the next day. Uh -huh. and, um, and you were successful doing that? I was very successful, and I hired my cousins to run the whole operation after that. Then when I became 18, I started selling strawberry shortcake and st fresh strawberries in local, the local, like a little roadside attraction. And how old were you then? 18. 18. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you were selling your shortcakes and then more businesses <laughs> came after that. Yeah, it just kind of started from there. I, I kind of grew that Behringer business into, um, I uh, built a 10,000 square foot building and with a commercial kitchen and I had 70 employees and we made cookies and jams and syrups and sauces and I opened up a retail store in the Pike Place Market. I had that for about 15 years. So I, because of the startup junkie in me, I, I take a business like that and I, I'm like, okay, let's do retail, let's do wholesale, you know, let's get on the internet and sell, let's open up a store in the Pike Place Market, let's sell strawberry shortcake at all the fairs. So mm -hmm. I kind of look at a business and I, I try to do all the little things within it so that I feel like I'm a startup junkie within the main business. Right, well, it sounds like you like a lot of interface with your customers, too. You're yeah. in businesses where you're, you're meeting your customers face-to-face. Absolutely, face. yes. Yeah. Now, Something grew out of a wonderful idea. We were just talking in the green room about, about girlfriends, how we mm -hmm. never get to spend enough time with our girlfriends. It's like, oh, I miss you so much. Yeah. I just love you so much. Let's get together. Let's get and together. it just never happens. Yeah, we get it lip service. Yeah, we do. And I think our intentions are good, but everybody's busy. People have kids, have other you know, obligations. So tell me about this idea that grew out of the fact that we have such mm -hmm. a hard time seeing our girlfriends. Yeah. I just, I was working, I was being a workaholic, and I, I still am, but I was just working all the time, and my, I was spending time with my employees and not my friends, and I'm like, I just saw my best friend twice in a year. This is ridiculous. Good thing we have two birthdays. So, <laughs> yeah. I, and I started talking to other women, and we all, we all feel the same way. We, we want to get together. We crave our girlfriends, but um, we don't do it. So I wanted to start a business to create the time, date, and place to get together. So, like, my next party is June 1st. I'm like, if... If I invite you to come on June 1st, you'll put it in your calendar, and you'll come, and we'll go and we'll have we'll go shopping, and we'll get some spa services, um, have a couple pink drinks, maybe have a goodie bag. So you <laughs> call these crave parties, crave parties. right? Mm -hmm. And he, we're looking at some pictures from a crave party. So what would I do? I would get an invitation and then send them out to my 10 best girlfriends to come with me to one of these parties. Is that how it works? Absolutely. I'd love for you to bring 10 people. Most <laughs> people bring just a few of their girlfriends. 
Um, so yeah, we actually do mostly mostly email marketing. So we would email you, and you would you'd be on our mailing list, and we invite you to our three or four parties that we have a year. Um, like my next one is a sample sale, so we're having like 50 designers and local boutique stores all under one roof. Got the invitation. Oh, there you go. I've got already the invited invitation. you. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's just it's open to anybody. Right. And we just bring our buddies, and we just have a great time as yeah, girls. We do time. we do girl stuff. Right. So I saw some spa, some facial stuff mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. there, and everyone is different. Has a little bit different themes. Right. How it works. Yeah. We do a holiday shopping party during the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a big summer party where we um, eat s'mores outside and watch the sunset go down, and have a salmon barbecue. And on the indoors, we have all the women-owned businesses with clothing and jewelry and handbags and spa services, of course. And then we do entertainment. We have fashion shows and. Pilates demonstrations, and I'll, I like to promote health and wellness too. So we, we just, what I love to do is go into a community and work with all the women-owned businesses and bring them all under one roof for a night and then invite all of our guests, all the girlfriends come in. and So it's a, just a win-win for everybody. So this is a chance for us to hang out with our girlfriends and do something different than just going out for dinner or going right. to a bar and having some drinks. Right. Yeah, get to do yeah. something totally. And support your local community. Okay, so how and do you get make... to know the new... like we we live in our you know we live in our neighborhood and we don't even go across town to to another part of our you know it's city. too far away yeah. to drive. So my miles. whole thing is get out of your car and go on vacation in your own city. That's why I wrote the Crave guidebooks. Mm -hmm. I have those here. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, so that's designed. Those are all women-owned businesses that we feature, mm -hmm. and when there's like ten different neighborhoods, and we're like here's the the women-owned businesses of Seattle, and uh, we've done Vancouver, BC, and San Francisco also, and now we're, we're trying to go into the other cities. And we focus on boutique shopping, spas, Pilates studios, just kind of an insider girl's guide to the city. And then those stores, a lot of times, come into our, our public crave parties also. Now, these crave parties are something that aren't just happening in the Seattle area. They're happening all over the country right. now. Right. And actually in yes. Canada as well. And in um, Amsterdam. Oh, yes, I saw <laughs> that on your website. Yeah. And growing. So how does that work? Is it a, f a it's franchise? A it's a license. Or? It's yes. a license. Like, kind of like a franchise. Mm -hmm. So I've licensed the concept out to other people in other cities. So a person like you would host a Crave party in Montreal, for example, mm -hmm. or Amsterdam, right. you said. Mm -hmm. And the same concept applies everywhere. Right. So tell me how you make money. Uh, obviously, I understand the licensing concept of making money, but how do you make monies from the cr money from the crave party itself then? So we charge to get in. Mm -hmm. So um, if there's food involved, it costs like $35 to go. You get food in a goodie bag. Um, the sample sale that's coming up is like $15. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have sponsors, and all the vendors pay to be there. So that's how we make our money. It's a win-win for everybody it's then. It's a win-win. And you say you only use women? to as vendors mostly mostly women mostly women businesses yeah. small, so that's great exposure for small businesses then there it's a great exposure so i'm all about supporting the small business owner so you'd have people who make handbags and what are the kinds mm -hmm. of to give me some ideas of some of the other vendors clothing, that would be there yeah spa services mm -hmm. you know people that make lotions and potions even dog products because a girl loves her dog yeah that's my <laughs> kind of girl it is i love mine so of all these startups that you've tried you've had to have had some failures yeah Tell me about those. About 20. <laughs> about 20? That's all? <laughs> oh, let's see. Failures. Um, my motto is fail fast. Mm -hmm. so, fail uh, fast. Fail fast. Mm -hmm. So jump out there and just do it. Sometimes I just prototype a business to get a business card. Like I, I started a business once called wowcookies.com. So I got a business card and I got a logo, wowcookies.com. I went down to the San Francisco Fancy Food Show because I was always in that show with my, my Behringer products. And... Um, I made a cookie that won the best um, cookie in the nation one year. It was a little lemon tea cookie. When you bite into it, you'd say, wow. So I thought, I'm going to start a business called Wow Cookies and get all the wow cookies of the world together and sell them on the Internet. And um, I went down to the San Francisco Fancy Food Show, and I went around to try to find all my wow cookies. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I couldn't find enough cookies that made you say, wow. Cookies are great, and they're really good, but they don't. If I'm going to call it Wow Cookies, it needs mm -hmm. to say Wow. Right. So I found didn't out that, wow. and then the couple of Wow Cookies <laughs> I found didn't want to drop ship for me. So I came back from that trip, and I I failed at that business within like a week. So within a week, uh, yeah, you knew I didn't in a even, week, I, yeah, because it wasn't going to happen. There's not not enough Wow Cookies. So some people write a business plan for eight years on something <laughs> like that, and then finally start. But I I failed fast. So that's now, your best advice: get out there and just get it out there and just. Get it out of your system. You also started a company called the Circuit Workout. That yeah, didn't, that was didn't, another didn't failure. Work out so well. That took three years to fail. 
um, um, yeah, I, I'd like to fail a little faster. Yeah, because I rented a building five years. And what was that lease. about? What was the circuit workout? It, it was a, a circuit workout where, like, a exercise studio where mm -hmm. you come in and you work out for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I also wrote a log book. I, I've toyed around in the health and fitness business quite a bit. So I wrote a log book where you read, write down everything you eat and exercise. So I thought, I'm going to start a fitness studio. <laughs> you said it was in the wrong <laughs> and I'm neighborhood. Grow a chain. It, was, mm -hmm. it was the wrong neighborhood. Um, I went a couple hours down the road and started mm -hmm. it because the rent was a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. So And it worked better there. I, I just learned after I opened up that business that I really wasn't that interested in helping people <laughs> with their fitness goals. That wasn't my forte. Mm -hmm. and do, and, but after I spent all the money and signed the five-year lease, so I had to get out of all of that. So you have StartupJunkies.com. What can I learn if start I go there? StartupJunkie.com. StartupJunkie.com. What can start I StartupJunkie. I started that business just because I am a startup junkie, and it's a division. My Crave company um, has a couple different divisions. We do the Crave parties, and then we help uh, women-owned businesses. And so Startup Junkie is to help entrepreneurs, is what we call them, um, grow their businesses in all aspects. We work with local intelligentsia, so lawyers, branding people, mm -hmm. accountants, marketing people, we, and we help women grow their businesses. So you're linking all these important people to a, a woman who wants to start a small business, and you, it's like mentoring, really. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Just like what we're talking about with Michelle, right. exactly. way to give back. Yes. So you, you have, obviously, lots of big successes, too. Let's end on a happy note, shall we? <laughs> what, we only have about 10 seconds here, but what's the most that you've learned from your biggest success? What could you share with us? One little nugget. Um, when something comes easy, go with it. So my Crave parties, when I first started it, um, it was three nights in a row. I sold out in two weeks. And it's like, and you, okay, that's you easy. You knew you had it. Let's just go with it. All right. Yes. All right, <laughs> fail fast. And if it's working, you know you've got to win. Yes, Thank yes. you so much, Melody, Thank for you being for with us. Here. All right. <laughs> to learn more about Crave parties in your area or about any other guests, please visit www.sbsummit.com slash guests.